Good morning, folks. We're watching a plasma filament incoming on the southeastern limb. We've got a CME coming our way, a focused science coverage with a message, and some fun. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day with some snaps, but it's the one in the middle. It's a filament eruption headed at Earth. Coronal hole incoming on the south as well, but let's take another look at that eruption here. Clearly near center disk, and a fairly outward push after the snap. It was not a tremendously dense filament, so the CME is sparse, but it could have been worse, as in red 304 angstroms, we see just how much plasma erupted with the event, most filtering down through the corona. It's worth watching one more time. Both Enlil spirals were updated, and both clearly show the impact coming to Earth and arriving on the 10th. While I do not think the CME is scary, it may be moving a bit faster than they believe. We will have eyes open beginning on the 9th. Let's move on to several papers on pre-seismic electromagnetic anomalies. Geomagnetic, ionospheric, VLF, total electron content, and it brings up a question many long-time observers ask. Why don't we focus as much on earthquake prediction compared to space weather, climate forcing, and catastrophism these days? Well, in addition to the others being my strong suit, the field needs no help at all. Thousands of papers now, full acceptance by the field, a satellite dedicated to spotting the pre-earthquake anomalies, and a textbook by the AGU dedicated to the topic as well. There is simply no need to do anything other than watch their progress and feel good about helping to push that field into reality after most thought it was crazy in just 2011. A last article here. Avi messing with us or perhaps writing while intoxicated, seeking to say the nova elements on Earth were not just sent here but did so without a heliosphere to protect our solar system that it had shrunk down to a fifth of the distance between the Earth and Sun, putting the planets in literal interplanetary space. The heliosphere is usually 123 AU, so that's kind of a wild idea. The better one being that the Sun produced those nova-level elements in a recurrent micronova. But let's play devil's advocate a moment. This other option is basically requiring the Sun's magnetic field to do what the Earth's is doing, a major reduction during some form of a greater shift doesn't sound very reasonable to me, but when the alternative option basically calls out a similar level solar disaster, I suppose we'll just tip a hat and move on. If you missed last night's video, we finally got the Earth version of the animation we need and we went back over the rationale and research that has put it into such an important position for understanding how the solar particles touch all latitudes of our planet. Check it out if you missed it. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.